So to, let's get started with today's content, which is all about teaching instruments in elementary music. Now, there's a lot I can say about this, but I'm going to narrow it down to, um, I'm looking at my list so I don't forget anything, how to use the instruments, which ones do you need, and then what to do if you don't have it, very many instruments, and then what, uh, well, we talked about how to use them, and what kind of activities you can use the instruments with. And so, First of all, I want to talk about, make sure you check out the lessons, the different lessons included in the academy, that there's several different ones in there. And usually if you click on the lesson and you look at the description next to the lesson, it will tell you, first of all, is it for upper or lower elementary? And it will also tell you what materials you need. And so if you see it, it include it, the materials that you need are instruments, then that means that that lesson will be about instruments or it will include tips on how to include instruments in that lesson if that makes sense but the brand new lesson I just added this morning is called peanut sat on a railroad track which is a speech piece and we're going to talk about how to include instruments with speech pieces it's a speech piece that includes instruments that you can add to it alrighty we're gonna jump right in that's a lot of talking I just did right <laughs> okay so I realize most of you are watching this in replay and I'm also um, adding these Facebook Lives now into the Academy. So for the people that are not in the Facebook group, then they're um, able to watch it there as well. All right, so let's go ahead and um, jump right in. And the first thing I want to talk about is how to use the instruments. So how do you use the instruments? Well, the way you use the instruments is a lot of different ways. So. Um, there, the, the ideas I have is you can have small groups come up with rhythms or they can create rhythms together as a class. You can teach a rhythm and the students echo play or you teach a, um, a rhythm and then the kids will improvise. We've talked about that too. And then, um, so group rhythms, individual improvising or creating rhythms, um, whole class playing on instruments we're going to we're going to talk a lot more detail about which instruments and how to do the, how to go about these things i'm just throwing out ideas right now and then we're going to break it down into steps and then also centers if you're comfortable doing centers there are ideas for centers you can do and also i want to um or you can even have partners come up with different um, playing different rhythms in on instruments i wanted to make a quick um kind of throw in real quick and tell you guys that the elementary music teacher blueprint course which is included inside of the academy there is a whole lesson about teaching instruments and there's also a whole nother lesson in that course and I'm sorry off the top of my head I can't remember which lessons those are but if you go to that it's included like I said if you just scroll down you can even just watch individual lessons if you don't want to take the entire course there's also a lesson in there about how to do centers and how I suggest doing that so I'm not going to go into detail here because that training is inside the Academy you can watch it anytime you can all right so we talked about a whole class small group partners individual these are different ways that you can incorporate instruments in your classroom. Now, how do you do that? You don't just go, okay, today here's an instrument, find a partner and play it. I mean, you can, there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm gonna give you specific ideas on how to do these things, okay? The easiest way to get started with playing instruments in your classroom is by simply having students learn to play steady beat. That is the, with anything in life or anything in teaching, there's always a foundation, right? Think about a house. You can't build a house. I mean, I guess you could, but it would fall apart, right? You can't build a house unless there's a foundation. They gotta lay the concrete, the foundation has to be set before the house can be built. That's the same way in elementary music. Steady beat has to come first. Okay. But I wanted to say a couple of you that I've talked to have been in situations that I was in where your students maybe it hasn't been the case where you haven't had music for a long time where your school hasn't had music for a long time but the teacher that was teaching before you started not that they didn't teach music but maybe it was just a lot of sitting and singing and there wasn't a lot of steady beat being felt not just taught but i feel like kids need to experience you know music not just learning about it 
And so you're in a position where maybe you're, I'm sorry, my nose is running. Your upper elementary kiddos are a little behind. And so you're looking at your objectives to teach and you're like, I can't do that with them because they have not had the foundation laid to be able to build upon it. So you're kind of having to backtrack a little. And I like this phrase I've actually heard before. And some of you have heard me say this on our member calls is you can't go forward sometimes until you move back. And what I mean by that is I had to do this with my own students is I couldn't just, you know, here's where you're supposed to be and I'm going to just keep going because they're going to get further and further behind, right? So you have to sometimes break it down and go back to the building blocks and the foundation. All that to say, wrapping that up a little bit is we're talking about steady beat. So steady beat is the foundation. And even if your students are fourth and fifth graders and they have never been taught the foundation of steady beat, do that first. That's what I'm trying to say is do that first. So with your instruments, I would start with body percussion first. Just simply have, I know you can't see my legs, but simply just have them pat their legs while you sing a song. While you are, um, maybe you're playing a rhythm on a drum while they're patting the steady beat to it. Maybe they're just listening to a song while they're patting the steady beat. Maybe you're reading a book and they're patting the steady beat to it. Then, when you're ready to transfer to instruments, let's say rhythm sticks, okay? Because pretty much that's the instrument that you have enough of for everyone in your class. It was the easiest instrument to get for everyone in your class. You can buy a set of them for pretty cheap. So let's say now that you've done, let's, and it doesn't matter what grade this is right now, okay? This can be any grade. But let's say you've already done the steady beat on, um, for body percussion by patting legs. Now everybody has a rhythm stick. If it's easier for you to have them clap, because if they're going to transfer the rhythm sticks from doing body percussion, then they're already using their hands. Now they're going to have the rhythm sticks and use their rhythm sticks, right? So you're teaching them what steady beat is first. Then they're playing the steady beat. Once you feel like the kids are comfortable, and you're always going to have one or two that just, they're having a hard time finding the beat. They're a little behind, or they're a little fast, or it's kind of like slow, fast, slow, you know. <laughs> it sounds like a syncopated rhythm instead of a steady, a steady beat. That's normal, okay? And sometimes these kids just need more time, right? I like to also say that kids aren't robots, and what I mean by that is um, kids all learn at different paces with anything in school. There are some kids who just come in and no matter what you teach them in music, they get it right away. It's just natural. Some kids are just more naturally gifted at music than others. And then there's kids that you're like, I feel like I've said the same thing over and over and they're still not getting it. That's normal. And I'm um, sorry if I'm looking up. I can't figure out if looking at the computer screen is a camera or if I'm looking up here if that's the camera. So if I look like... <laughs> If I look like I'm looking down or up in the ceiling, I'm trying to figure out where I'm supposed to look because I'm using a different computer today. So I apologize. Anyways, my eyes are shifty everywhere. Just, <laughs> just ignore me and um, ignore looking at me and just listen to what I'm saying more than anything. Um, so I lost my train of thought, of course, because that's what I do. Um, we're talking about steady beat. If your students... Oh yeah, so if you have those couple kids that are a little bit more behind than other ones, then that's okay that they will eventually get it. And even if they don't, they're experiencing music, which is the main point, right? Okay, so you've done rhythm as a class, whole class instruction first. We're starting from the basics. You've done whole class instruction of steady beat. Now, if you wanna have some kids play, you know, like maybe some drums, some have rhythm sticks, some have a maraca, some have a tambourine or whatever else you have in your classroom, that's perfectly fine as well, okay? It's up to you. Everybody uses the same instrument or you have everybody using something different. You've done steady beat. Now what's next? Now it's whole class rhythms. So you, your kids should be practicing rhythms all year long, right? When you're teaching a song, you maybe instead of just jumping right in and teaching the words to the song and singing, you start with teaching the rhythm of that song first. So after they've they've already kind of practiced the rhythm. You've practiced, you maybe you're showing them different cards with, okay, line one has this rhythm and the first two measures. Okay, let's clap it together, line two, whatever. And so start with an easy song that maybe has a repeated rhythm that's easy for them to remember. And then you're, you know, same thing, they're maybe clapping the rhythm, then you transfer to instruments. So now we're doing rhythm instead of just steady beat. Okay, so that's the most basic, that's the whole class um, what you can do with the whole class is beat and rhythm, okay? 
Then when you're ready to do like um, some small group, <coughs> some small group things, after you feel like maybe it's, you know, middle of the year or even closer to the end of the year, you feel like your students are comfortable doing rhythms, they're comfortable with knowing what the rhythms are, they know how to count them, then with small groups, you can divide them up and maybe you put like, I don't know, let's see, I'm trying to think about how many groups. You have like five groups of kids, okay? I'm just giving suggestions here of different ideas. If you're stuck, if you open a cabinet and you have instruments and you're like, I don't know what to do with these. These are just ideas to help you get started, alrighty? Okay, so let's say you split the kids into five groups. And what I like to do is, in those five groups, you put one drum in each group, one, we're just gonna use the same instruments I just talked about. And we're not talking about melodic instruments yet, we're just simply doing rhythm instruments right now. One pair of rhythm sticks, maybe one sand block, one, um, what am I, uh, off the top of my head, maraca, and then, so let's say there's five kids in each group, and then one, I don't know, a guiro in each group. So you have five, five, five groups with five kids that each have five different instruments, but each of the groups have the same instruments, okay? And what you're gonna do is, first of all, you've already, so as they're sitting in their groups, do a song, they're playing the rhythm of that song on their instrument. And now it's up to you how the kids get to those instruments, because I know what you're thinking. Well, how are we? Everybody wants the drum, right? <laughs> That's just how it goes. So what you're going to do is maybe your students started a certain instrument, and then you give them time to rotate. Maybe you, you do that same song, as redundant as it might be, you do that same song five times so every kid has a um, time to play a different instrument. If you don't want to do that, Another way to do that is, so it, you maybe just have a way to keep track of it. If little Sally Sue played the drum, you know, week one, and then week two comes around, then you know that she gets, she gets a different instrument because someone else gets a chance. So everybody, you know, you tell the kids, it's fairness. You're not going to have the same kids playing the drum every time, and so just don't argue about it. Um, or you simply call their names, and when you're putting them in groups, you tell them what instrument to go to. That's another way to alleviate who gets what instrument. Okay, so in these small groups they're in, a fun thing to do with instruments is to say, okay, remember the rhythm we just played together as a class? Now in small groups, I want you to create a different verse for that song and play the rhythms on your instruments. Or, I want you as a class, um, as a group, sorry, to come up with an ostinato that you're going to play underneath the song. Or I want you to come up with different dynamics you're going to play on your instruments together as the song's going on and then tell the class how you're going to do it. Or, okay, we just did all the rhythms together. Now in your small groups, I want you to pick one of the rhythms we just played and to come up with a way you could extend that rhythm by improvising. There's so many different things you can do. Do you see where I'm going with this? Is in, in the comments, you guys, or if you're watching this in the academy right now, please leave comments and tell, me, tell us what you do with your students. I would love to hear how you use instruments in your classroom. Um, so that's some small group ideas, okay? And we talked about improv improvising already, right? And we, I believe that was week one. Um, okay, so with your, if you're doing partner, that's pretty easy. You have kids, they have a partner, and you can have them do echo rhythms. Okay, kid one plays a rhythm, kid two has to echo it. Then they just, they switch. Kid two plays the rhythm, kid one echoes it. All right, and you can make it longer. Okay, you do four beats first of all, then the second time you guys do eight beat rhythms, and the third time 16 beat rhythms, or whatever. Um, so that's one thing to do with partners is to have them echo echo play rhythms after each other. Or if you've just done a song, then you say you split into partners and you have the kids just simply practice the rhythms of the song you just did together. And the, all this, all these ideas I'm giving are also things you can do with the melodic instruments, but we're going to talk more in detail about ways to use those as well. Okay. Um, and then so we did group, whole class. I'm just giving ideas, simple ideas right now, and then one to two kids. Okay, now, so these are different ways on how to use them. Um, oh, and I mentioned centers. Okay, so if you do centers, like I said, there's a training on that already, but with centers, you're maybe if you do centers in your classroom and you have six centers, you might have three different areas of instruments. 
And so those are good ways. Boom whackers is a good one to use for centers, recorder for your upper grades, and then also maybe like a rhythm instrument center where they're they're creating rhythms on their own. So that's another way to use instruments. So you're, uh, you're thinking, okay, all this is great, and I'm a little still overwhelmed. Okay, so if you're in a classroom, let's slow this down a little bit. If you're in a classroom that doesn't have very many instruments, or you don't know where to start with purchasing instruments, what do you do? Okay, let's talk about that. So first thing I wanna tell you is use body percussion, okay? Have the kids create rhythms or steady beat with body percussion. Everybody has a body. And so don't ever say, well, I can't do that because I don't have instruments. Or my kids wouldn't do that because they don't know how to play the instruments. They have a body. So when you do eventually, when you are eventually able to get instruments, your kids are so used to doing rhythms and steady beat by walking around or patting their legs or clapping their hands or snapping their fingers or even patting their head or whatever you're doing. That by the time you get instruments and you transfer those things to instruments, then it's so much easier because they're so used to it. It's just a natural progression of going from my body to an instrument and they're just, it's, you know, they're already kind of used to doing these things. Okay, so what, so what do you do if you don't have instruments? We talked about body percussion. There's also bucket drums, um, which buckets, uh, I mean, I know they're pretty cheap, you know, and I know actually sometimes hardware stores are giving things like that away. Another thing that you can get is um, you can have the kids make their own maracas. Like I said, rhythm sticks is one of the cheapest things to buy. And then uh, if you are still like, look at, look at Pinterest. I don't have a lot of, of ideas on there for my Pinterest page about how to make instruments, but I know it's out there. So make your own instruments. Um, and then there's so many fundraisers and grants and um, things like that to get instruments in your classroom, but just give it time. Don't overwhelm yourself with, I can't do a good enough job because I don't have a lot of instruments in my classroom and all these teachers in my district have instruments and I don't have them. Uh, yeah, that was me. <laughs> so, but my kids still learn music, y'all. They still learn music and we still had a great time. So don't beat yourself up if you don't have instruments in your classroom. You'll get there, use bodies and bucket drums and start slowly. Just build your program up over time, okay? So which instruments do you need? Well, I would start with, like I said, rhythm sticks. Boom whackers are an inexpensive option. If you can't afford to get a bunch of mallet instruments right away, boom whackers are an inexpensive, inexpensive option for um, a melodic instrument. And now it's different because, you know, you have one per child or whatever, but they usually come in sets of eight, like an octave. And then you can even buy extender caps to make them sound like a bass note. Um, you could buy sets of boom whackers and then go into buying your drums. And maybe you can only afford one. Maybe you can, um, and then you build up, you know, two or three. Then start trying to get ORF instruments, you know, some melodic instruments in recorder. Recorders are actually not that expensive. And I do know a lot of music teachers will, um, you know, have the kids bring maybe even just two dollars and purchase the uh, recorders that way. And so if you're wanting recorders in your classroom, then do that. And then also in PTA, sometimes it depends on what school you're at. And I totally get that. But sometimes we'll do fundraisers to earn enough money for it, for recorders or other instruments you need in your classroom. So I would start with those instruments. There's so many rhythm instruments. If you even look at Amazon and you're scrolling down and you're like, oh my goodness, do I really need a Wiro? Do I really need these little tiny finger symbols? Excuse me. It's great to have all those. I'm not saying it's not. But don't overwhelm yourself with, I need all the instruments. I need every single one. And then you get them and you're like, well, wait, what do I do with these? That was me. I was like, what do I do with these little tiny finger symbols? Do I, are they really necessary? And the kids half the time try to play them, you know, like the symbols in a marching band. Um, and so just start with the, start with, just like we talked about steady beat with instruments, start with the foundation, start with the things you absolutely need and then build it up. Okay. And then, okay, now we're going to go into, like we talked about, whole class, small group, partners, steady beat and rhythm, but what, what activities are you doing besides improvising and just play the rhythm of the song? Here's some ideas I like to use, okay? First thing is just like I just talked about the speech piece I added in the academy that Peanut set on a railroad track, and I, there's a couple other 
speech pieces in the academy as well. One of my favorite things to do with instruments is obviously, sorry, there's a bug, <laughs> is to sing and add instruments to that, but speech pieces, and if you're not aware what that is, of what that is, it's basically just a spoken poem, pretty much. A spoken, it could even just be two lines that just repeats over and over. And what's great about it is the kids just speak this and then you're adding layering instrument parts in, having them help you create ostinato parts, having them help you play rhythms, and then layering in instrument parts while they're speaking. Then they're not having to focus on singing and playing instruments at the same time. So speech pieces is a great idea for adding instruments as a whole class or small group activity. Another thing I like to do is um, different books. And there's some books I showed you when I talked about movement. But you can also add instruments to books. And, you know, find a book about a rainstorm even. And as you're reading a book about a rainstorm, and maybe you've already sang some songs about rain, and then you're adding instruments to it. And talk with your kids. Have them help you create it. Don't just say, we're doing these instruments. But maybe have them, have them come up with ways to add instruments to it. So talk about a rainstorm. Okay, we read this book about rain. Now, when I read the word thunder, who, who's going to play the thunder? What instrument can we use? And, of course, everybody's going to say, the drum. I mean, of course, right? It's the loudest. And so you maybe pick two to three kids, maybe not have too many for thunder because it's going to be very loud. And then they play anytime you say the word thunder. Okay, but what are we going to play? Are we just going to hit the drum or are we going to play, you know, like a thunder sound? Have them help you not just pick what instruments to do, but what rhythms or steady beat are they going to, what, what dynamics are they going to do for those? And then talk about what instruments you're going to do for the rain. What's going to happen when you say the word lightning? Although we know lightning doesn't have a sound, you could still have someone play for lightning, right? Because it's dramatic and loud. So what are you going to do when you hear the word sprinkle, when it's sprinkling? What's going to happen when the rain stops? Everybody's like, oh, we rest, right? Okay, so talk about a rainstorm. Create it. Read a book, sing a song about it, and then create a rainstorm, a rainstorm with instruments. Any book you read, you can add instruments to it. It's so much fun just to say, okay, Pete the Cat for some reason is on my head. Pete the Cat is fun because every time you turn, you know, a couple pages, he talks about his groovy shoes and what he's doing at school. And there's always like a little song with music notes in it. And so, but you can have the kids add instruments, give them, you know, split the class and say, okay, these kiddos, you're going to play anytime you hear the word Pete the Cat. You're going to play anytime you hear the word Groovy Shoes. You see what I'm saying? So anytime they hear their words come in, they maybe you come up with a rhythm. They all play that rhythm anytime they hear the word come in. Or they simply just play Pete the Cat, Groovy Shoes. Come up with kind of like a, a pattern or at the same rhythm they're going to play each time they hear their words come in. There's so many books that you can either have the kids play to a certain word, create a rainstorm, or books will sometimes tell them what to do. And they play when they hear whatever it says to do, they play that. Um, and then we talked about composing, adding instruments to compositions. So if that's way over your head and it still overwhelms you, that's okay. You do not have to do this, but um, a fun, like I said, we when we talked about improvising a composition earlier in the month, <laughs> excuse me, what you do after the kids come up with their own creations or they've been improvising, you add instruments to it, okay? And it makes it, they are so proud when they're allowed to use their, their creativity to come up with ways to play, you know, something they created. Even if they didn't write it down, maybe they've been creating rhythms by clapping and then they're transferring it to instruments or maybe you are having your kids do notation and as they're notating rhythms then they play the rhythm they wrote or when they are um if okay some kids are ready for this and some aren't but if they're notating right they're notating rhythms maybe um i'm sorry notating a melody maybe they transfer it to a melodic instrument which we're going to talk about that more about melodic instruments in a minute okay and i can't read my writing pick instruments based on oh so when you are singing songs, different songs you're teaching in your classroom, um, what? Oh, I think that's what I just talked about. Sorry, you guys. So, oh, I know what I was going to say. I'm sorry. <laughs> I wrote it down and then I'm like, I don't know what I was trying to say by that. I do know what I'm trying to say. When you're teaching a song in your classroom and then you're trying to figure out, okay, 
sometimes the lessons, right, will tell you what instruments to add. But if you're anything like me, sometimes with different curriculum you're teaching from, when you look at these lessons and sometimes you're like, mm, I don't think that's going to go well or I don't like that, you can change it and make it your own. Okay, with any lesson you're teaching, you can make it your own. And how you make it your own is if you're looking at a song you're teaching and it's suggesting you add different instruments to it, but maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you don't want to do those instruments. So what you do is you think about, okay, am I teaching a fast song today or is it kind of slower? So what instruments would go good with this song? I maybe want to pick like five kids to go sit in the back of the room and play, you know, play some instruments to the song, but I don't know which ones to tell them to do. Base it on the tempo of the song, the words, the song. You know, if you're singing a song about peace, maybe you're not going to have a giant drum sounds coming from the back of your room, right? Because it's not peaceful. So, you know, pick some softer instruments for that. If it's a fast song, you're going to want to pick some instruments that they can play kind of fast with. If it's a slower song, you want to pick something that's more melodic and peaceful. Um, so, yeah, that's what I was going to say about that. Now, before I wrap this up, I want to talk about the melodic instruments. The same way you, um, it gets a little more tricky because instead of just playing rhythms and steady beat, there's all kinds of notes on there, right? Recorder, you know, and then the xylophones and then even boom whackers. So what do you do with those? Well, the same way we talked about, uh, you can do whole class, small group or partners, you, the same thing with the melodic instruments, but you have to teach them how to play it first and what to do with them. So there's so many different ideas for this. So let's talk about xylophone first or any mallet instrument. You can teach them an ostinato, okay? It can be a, a whole chord, a broken chord that they're just repeating back and forth or, you know, a crossover hand chord they're playing as you're learning a song. If they're in partners, they can make up some kind of thing together. You can give them, you know, instructions like, okay, we're going to do a C chord and teach them what that is. And so when you're facing a partner, you can do anything with the C, E, or G. And then you put it together as a class, and all these kids are improvising on just those notes you gave them. That's um, So with the mallet instruments, and a lot of times with your lessons, it'll tell you what to play with that. It'll give you, you know, like a, an ostinati and what notes to play with that. And when you're doing that, um, you are, as a whole class, there's, if everybody doesn't have a mallet instrument, then they can just, in the air like this, play the rhythms, play whatever the kids behind them are doing, or even on their lap, they tap what the kids on the mallet instruments are doing. Or you have some playing mallet instruments, some playing a recorder. Maybe you just have them playing, if you're doing a C chord, the C over and over and over. And then some kids, you give them the C chord on the boom whackers. So everybody maybe is playing a melodic instrument, but a different kind. That's totally up to you. The main thing I want to say about teaching instruments is there's no right or wrong way. It's up to you what you do. It's up to you how much with teaching the instruments you're wanting to do. It's up to you with how difficult or easy you're wanting it to make it. It's up to you if you want to do just whole class, whole class, wow, whole class instruction or small group or partner activities. It's up to you if you want to spend a little bit of time on instruments or a lot of time. All of these things I'm giving you are just suggestions, and I want suggestions from you guys as well because I know you have amazing ideas. So please share it with everybody else in this group, you guys, okay? So mallet instruments. So we talked about doing whole class, ostinato, um, boom whackers. There's so many boom whacker activities where even in centers you can have a piece of paper up. And maybe your students don't know how to read the lines and spaces yet on the staff. And so you can color code a note. And when you point at that note when you're learning a song, they know, oh, I have the red one, which is the C. And I'm going to play that red when I see that. And then the orange, orange boom marker plays the orange. And so you start just by learning the notes one at a time on the paper or maybe it's on a smart board. And then you start working on the rhythm and then eventually the kids will be playing them, playing the rhythm of that song on the boom markers. It sounds really cool.